Support this podcast via our Patreon and get more writerly goodness. Visit patreon.com slash nanocast to join up. Welcome to NaNoWriMo Every Month. My name is J. Daniel Sawyer. I'm the author of some 20 books, 34 short stories, and numerous articles and other things. And I am your guide on this journey to use NaNoWriMo to level up to professional output levels. Welcome to The Questions, Episode 76. Today, Rob asks, If it normally takes 10 years to become skilled... Is self-publishing first attempts bad for one's reputation? It's a good question, Rob. The answer is probably not. It's not just writing that you're learning and that takes time to get very good at. You're also learning all the ins and outs of publishing, not just the theoretical stuff like the legal and the tax stuff and whatnot, but you're learning about publishing well, which includes good layout good design, good art direction, good coding in your ebooks, and those things do take a while to learn too. They don't take quite as long at least well, if you're doing your own cover art from scratch, that can take that long, but the rest of it learns faster. But it does take a while to get the hang of it. I'll give you an example. I've spent a goodly bit of the last week going through every one of my books and updating them to a modern looking style sheet. Every one of the ebooks, every single one, and there's a lot of them. Because we're not just talking about every title, we're talking about every storefront for every title. What I wound up doing was that I did every title with the style sheet and then created storefront specific versions off of those style sheets with link pages in the back that link to the books from that storefront. But it was a bit of a huge job. And one of the things that it was hard to ignore when I went in there is they didn't just need a style sheet update. The earlier books needed a complete recoding because the software that I was using to generate them in the early days left all sorts of crap all over the books that screwed up the way they appeared on screens that weren't quite standards compliant and all that. And there was just a lot of extra useless tags in the code. There were a couple of books that by the time I cleaned them up, their file size had shrunk by half. And boy, what an eye-opener. Just how much I've improved as an ebook coder in the last six years. So that sort of stuff will improve too, as well as your cover design. I was replacing a lot of cover art, updating things, getting series with more consistent modern looks than we've had before, which has been fantastic and is already affecting sales. Oh boy, does that make a difference. All of these things are skills that you need to learn as you go, and it's really, really a lot better to learn them earlier on with your early books than later on. And here's why. Nobody's going to buy your early books. And if they do, they're not going to remember them, usually. Except for the occasional book that you fluke at early on, and it's really good, and you don't know why. We've all got at least a short story like that somewhere in our background. But if you wait till you're selling short stories into traditional markets before you start learning the self-publishing thing, it's going to be more time before you're filling the channels in a way that people are going to notice. It's much better to use that same time to get two learning curves out of the way. It won't damage your reputation because, like I said, no one will buy it, and the people that do buy it won't remember because... Nobody remembers a book they didn't like, unless they hated it for some uniquely specific reason. And it's more likely that you're going to make someone hate a good book than to hate a bad book. Bad books just aren't memorable enough to damage your reputation. Now, when you're publishing professional quality work, little ways down the line when you've got your feet under you and you're really starting to tick over... There will come a time when you're going to want to look back at the early catalog and decide what to do about them. I've seen a number of approaches. Some people will just pull them down. Some people will put them under a pen name, just in case, you know, one or two cells here or there under that pen name. Hey, that's free money, right? The stories are already written. They're already packaged. It's not costing you anything. So why not leave them up just in case? And the third solution, which I've at least heard writers talking about, which I think is really clever, is to repackage those early stories as 
an early story by and to put forwards in each of them. You know, I wrote this story when I was just starting writing. It may not appeal to any but my hardcore fans who want to see where I came from, but just for posterity, here it is, that kind of thing. You, know, you don't run it down. You just sort of give an honest account of how early it was in your career and how you're leaving it up there for fans who like that sort of thing. Because you will get fans who want to go back and read your early stuff, even if it's unreadable, because they get interested, and this will particularly happen with fans who also want to be writers someday. They get really interested in your development as an artist. And so that will appeal to them, even if it appeals to nobody else. But packaging them that way will make them accessible to and findable to the people for whom they appeal, while sort of warning everybody else off. But any one of those three strategies will safeguard your reputation after you start writing the kinds of books that have legs and that get people talking to each other. Because it's true that you don't want a situation wherein you've got an established name and then people stumble across an early book and they're like, oh my god, what is this? Has he completely lost his mind? And they don't go back and look at the copyright page, so they assume that since they haven't seen this title before, this must be a new one, and you've suddenly like gone on a bender and you're no longer trustworthy. That's not a good situation. But if you can avoid that situation, then having your early books up is not going to damage your reputation at all. It's just not the way readers think. So I hope that helps. And I'll see you tomorrow. NaNoWriMo Every Month is written and presented by J. Daniel Sawyer and produced by Artistic Whispers Productions. Visit our website at NaNoWriMoEveryMonth.com and leave a tip in the tip jar or join the Patreon to support this podcast. NaNoWriMo Every Month is copyright 2016 by J. Daniel Sawyer and Artistic Whispers Productions and is released under a Creative Commons non-commercial attribution no derivatives license. 